Corner segment. Joining me is Dr. Wayne Femister. He is a family physician, chronic pain expert, and author. And he's here today to talk about how we can use our mind and body to treat chronic pain. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Christine. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here on Doctor's Corner. And when it comes to chronic pain, how long has it been around? Or how long is, what's the history behind it? Well, chronic pain has is, is, um, been around, I think, as long as humans have been around. Um, in fact, the, when I studied acupuncture about 20 years ago, there was this um, mummy found in the Alps in, in Austria, and it was dated back 5,000 years with acupuncture points on the body, which is truly remarkable because we think acupuncture came from China, but in fact, it was probably used around the world, and the native people around the world understood that they can get pain relief by stimulating certain points in the body, like acupuncture points. And these were literally tattooed onto the, the person's um, skin. And we, can, we related that to acupuncture points. So it goes back a long way. Tattooed. <laughs> so so how, how do you specialize differently from what you do? Yeah, well, I'm a family physician and always had an interest with acupuncture and opened up my mind as I just went through my career. I've been a family physician for 19 years now. And several things changed the direction of my path. And one was into the study of the mind-body connection. And you know, I always wondered why in medicine we look at things in parts, like if you've got a problem with your gallbladder or your liver or your brain, we look at these individual areas. And our specialists are doing that. But in the reality of chronic pain, it's not about different parts. It's not like you got a sore back and that's where the problem is. It's to relate it to the interconnectedness of the body and the brain is literally feeding all these organs. And the brain is the, the main organ that controls the chronic pain state. But it's interesting, the history of it goes back to Descartes, a French philosopher 400 years ago. And he decided back then that modern medicine should be studied by dualistic theory, which means separating things into parts, like your brain and your liver, and looking at them and studying them and then learning. But the reality is, all these years later, modern medicine today is still doing the same. And it's sad because chronic pain needs to be a multi, um, multi-system approach. You know, you've got your brain, You've got your, your different organs, you've got the nervous system, and also the, the big new one that's more in the literature is the gut. And maybe another show we can talk about um, how the gut and your microbiome or the bacteria in the gut is literally influencing these organs in our brains as well. So massive history, very interesting. But you know, I've just found myself helping people by explaining some of these things. And just the knowledge that, oh my goodness, I can change my pain is revolutionary for them. So I just encourage them and teach them and work with them as I go through my sessions with them on the subject of the mind-body connection. Yes, we use our mind to improve in our running. So, and it's about teaching people to, to cope with chronic pain better using the mind and body connection. So how do you do it? Like, what's the first step? First step, with all patients, they're all unique, but um, I do an intake evaluation and on the intake form I cover subjects like the biology or the biomechanics of the patient, also the psychology of the patient, the social history and also the spiritual history just because that's where it's important to them and I can relate to different aspects of their history based on what they're saying. The second element of that is a brief pain inventory questionnaire, which really dives down deeper into the pain, where it is, how often, and how it affects them in their functional existence. And then I assess the mental health of the patient with depression and anxiety scores, and also catastrophizing score, which is all to do with negative pain mindset. So you're having thoughts about pain, and we all have negative mindsets at some times, but in pain in particular, it's very easy to get lost in this mindset of, of pain. So these are my evaluations, and then I examine the patient, a focused clinical exam, which is very helpful, uh, just picking up a few points to guide me towards the next step, which is to sit down, like we're doing right now, and just explain, look, this is what's going on, these are the factors, the mind-body connection, your past, your present, even your personality can add stress to our life sometimes and contribute to this programming of the brain. Mm -hmm. So 
and then I move on from there and do my treatments. Yeah, so do, tell us some techniques that you, you use. Mm -hmm. So with the mind-body connection, uh, there's kind of five basic things that I do. One is expressive writing, which has been science behind that for 30, 40 years. I do a very simple uh, advice tip of not talking about your pain, and I explain why. And then there's uh, thinking, taking those negative thoughts and changing them and turning them towards neutral, away from the negative towards something more neutral or even positive, if that's possible. And then the fourth one is um, affirmations. Say a positive affirmation and repeat it many times. And you know, some people don't like this one because they feel, well, I'm not being honest with myself. But what I say to them is, look, it's not about the pain right now or next week. It's about your pain or your brain in three months' time. Because the reality is we will be different in three months. And if we, just like you're running, you know, you've got to practice, you've got to put in the effort. If you put that effort and time into saying positive affirmations, and I'm quite happy to share that with you if you want, yes. <laughs> um, it just literally trains the brain in the neural networking and sets up a new pathway, literally a new pathway for having less pain and a better quality of life. So it's the fourth and my fifth is breathing. Breathing. And you know, I get into meditation as the, as the weeks go on, but to very simply for the first session, I just say, look, every hour of the day or between activities, if you're very busy, maybe with children or working, just between activities, you pause. Pause, okay. And you just breathe consciously. You inhale through your nose slowly. Count to five. And then exhale through your mouth slowly, count to five. And just repeat that three times. And the, what happens in those moments is we're switching the nervous system from a sympathetic drive. The, we call it the pain response or the fight-flight response. I'm sure our audience has heard of the fight-flight response. But that's the sympathetic aspect of the nervous system. And when we can change that around with a simple slow breath, we're swapping it over to the parasympathetic or the relaxation response or the healing response. And we literally feel better. You feel relaxed. And if you're doing this throughout the day, every day, then we're training your nervous system to be different. You're training your brain to be different. And over time, you literally take charge. And it's just like, are you going to be the back seat driver of the car? Or are you going to be the front seat driver of the car? Oh. Right? You want to be the, on the front seat driving? So that's what we're doing with the mind-body connection treatments or cognitive behavioral therapy treatments. We're literally doing something ourselves every day and we're owning it. And we're literally taking charge and moving forward. And you know, what about journaling? Journaling, yeah. yes. Journaling is something that uh, can be done. There's kind of two ways to use expressive writing and, and, or, uh, and to summarize, one is to write your thoughts and feelings and then to rip it up and put it in the garbage. And that's kind of cathartic yes. type release, yes. you know, get the thoughts from here onto paper and into the garbage. Very effective, making you feel good. But some of my patients do like to write, they like journal writing, so I encourage them to get a book, write it in every day, and, um, you know, they can reflect on that later. But really, at the end of the day, it's not what you write, it's more that you do write. That's the number one thing. And if you are writing, then there's a plethora of different ways to write and to exercise this skill set. But the science shows, and there's over a thousand articles in the literature now showing the health benefits of writing, not just a redu reduction in pain, <laughs> but also um, not just reduction in pain, but also you know less visits to the hospital, less visits to the doctors, less depression, less anxiety. So. It's a very therapeutic, rather surprising tool that anybody can use in their toolbox. And you know, for more information, the leader in the world on this subject is Dr. Jamie Pennybaker from Texas. And I have had the honor of talking to, to Jamie about his work in you know, his over, over four decades now. So it's something I recommend for my patients. That's wonderful. And, and what's the success been like? Well, I think everybody who engages in the plan of cognitive behavioral therapy gets benefit. Now, the pain may not go away, yeah. but they start to get that hope. They start to get that, you know, controlling their brain. And it's just inevitable over time that things will improve. 
you know, I don't just treat with cognitive behavioral therapy, I treat with injection, trigger point injections, I treat with nutrition advice, so it's kind of difficult to isolate, well, which one is working more than the other. I think they all help in different ways, but at the end of the day, um, it's a sure, a sure bet that their, their brain will, will change. And we've actually got studies showing that um, if you do certain, say, meditation exercises with listening to binaural beats, which is just a slightly different frequency of sound in both ears with headphones or earplugs, you literally train the brain to reduce pain. And we've pr proven that through pain catastrophizing scores, going down, that's the negative thinking, literally goes down if you use this type of technique for 20 minutes a day. Also, the pain scores go down, say from an eight to a four out of 10, for example. And the other amazing thing is when they do functional MRI scans, they can see that the brain enlarges, yes, enlarges in certain areas where the pain control is maybe less effective. So we're literally changing brain volume and we're changing brain structure at the yes. same time. You have, you're so passionate about what you do. And I want to, um, if people want more information, where can they go? Yes. Well, my website, waynephimister.com. That's W-A-Y-N-E-P-H-I-M for mother, <laughs> I-S-T-E-R.com. And it's got some information on this subject. Uh, another great resource is backincontrol.com, mm -hmm. written by my colleague, Dr. David Hanscom, previously in Seattle. He's got a wonderful website, and it's probably the best resource for people to go, and all the things I've been talking about today will be on that website and step one of his program. And uh, David, unfortunately, had to go through chronic pain for many years and suffered lots. And he writes about this in his book and he talks about it on his radio show. But his website is phenomenal. It's like 20 years of collective evidence and experience all on there for free. So that's a wonderful um, place to go for Great more information. Great resource. And mm. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. And I'd like you to come back. Thank you.